uh, we will begin our, our meeting as we typically do uh, with an invocation and pledge uh, of allegiance. So let me ask uh, uh, Pastor Isom or uh, Walter uh, Evans Sr. from Progressive Baptist Church if he would come up and also Molly Previtt and Tiffany Erthel uh, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please stand as you are able for the invocation uh, and Pledge of Allegiance. Dear God, we come to you this beautiful day that you allowed us to see and we pray, uh, Father, for this meeting, uh, this evening, uh, that you would just be the one who watches over us and make sure that we make the right decisions and handle the business and um, order. And we ask God that you would just keep us always in your care. We ask the blessing upon each member here today, each person representing the city of Macon, that you will keep them also in your care. These are many other blessings we ask. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Pastor Evans, thank you so much. Uh, Pastor Evans uh, licensed to preach in, uh, since 1982, uh, attended Macon Extension Center, American Baptist Theological College, and earned his diploma. Pastor Evans uh, did not know at the time that he would be preparing to step into the big shoes, those of the late Reverend Dr. Curtis Talbot, uh, founding pastor of Progressive Baptist Church. March the 7th, 2006, he was installed as the second pastor of this great church and uh, we thank you very much for what you do there and for being with us tonight. A Pledge of Allegiance uh, was led by Molly Previtt, who is a sixth grader at the Academy for Classi Classical Education. I think they call that ACE, uh, Academy for Classical Education. Molly's been in 4-H since the fourth grade. She currently serves as a sixth grade 4-H president, and uh, Molly competes in district project uh, achievement in the rabbits category where she brings awareness about rabbit diseases. Um, Tiffany, uh, also with T Tiffany Earth Earthel, uh, is uh, an eighth grader uh, at Rutland um, Middle School. Uh, Tiffany's been active in 4-H uh, since she was in the fifth grade, loves to run, and placed first in her age group at the 5K this month. Congratulations on that. Uh, Tiffany's favorite 4-H activities are the ones where she gets to cook, and she is currently preparing a breakfast dish, uh, District Project Achievement. Uh, this will be Tiffany's first year competing at the District Project Achievement Better Breakfast category. Uh, she competed in the Georgia National Fair in the Pizza, Omelet, and Healthy Commodity Contest. Isn't it great to thank you both for being here with us? And when we hear so much discouraging news about young people to have two such fine individuals to come and, and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, y'all help me give them a round of applause. We wish you all the best and you continue your education. Uh, we have a, a couple of uh, pro proclamations uh, that we want to uh, issue uh, tonight. Uh, the first one is uh, for uh, retired in honor of retired educators. If I've got any retired educators on the dais that would like to step down with me, and if you are a retired educator, I want you to stand and join us. And also, Murtis uh, Johnson is here to accept the proclamation on behalf of the retired educators. So let me come down and, and read the proclamation. Uh, this is a proclamation from the office of the mayor. It reads as follows. Whereas the governor of the state of Georgia has proclaimed the day of Sunday, November the 4th as Retired Educators Day in Georgia, and whereas there are more than 121,000 retired educators in Georgia, 
28,000 of whom are members of the Georgia Retired Educators Association. And whereas the retired educators of Georgia donate thousands of hours of volunteer service and make invaluable contributions to the welfare of their respective communities across the state. And whereas it is appropriate that a day be designated uh, for citizens to express their appreciation for the contributions that retired educators have made and continue to make for the betterment of human lives and for society. And whereas Macon Bibb County Retired Educators is a chapter of distinction with more than 200 members active and received this recognition because of volunteerism and services to our community and the state of Georgia. Now, therefore, our Robert A. B. Record do hereby proclaim November the 4th, 2018, as Macon Bibb County Retired Educators Day in Macon Bibb County, and I urge all citizens to observe this day in an appropriate manner honoring retired educators. I am witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand caused the seal of the Consolidated government to be affixed this fourth day of November, uh, and I'd like to present it to Murtis Johnson at this time, along with my appreciation and thanks to all of our retired educators and for what you continue to do. Thank you. Would you like to say a word or two? I just want to say thank you. Uh, we have a lot of retired educators here in Bibb County and across the state of Georgia, and I just want to thank the mayor and the councilmen, women, for what you're doing <laughs> for giving us this wonderful proclamation. We're gonna read it again at our next meeting, which is the second Wednesday in November, which is when we are gonna celebrate Retired Educators Day. And I say my hat is off to you for what a fine job you all are doing. Thank you. We have a, a, a second uh, proclamation uh, for N National Cyber Security Awareness Month. Is anybody here to receive this proclamation for National Cyber Security Awareness Month? Chris, are you aware of anybody that was supposed to be here to receive this proclamation? Good, then you, you'll be a perfect stand-in. Come over here and <laughs> you're, you're the closest thing I've got to cyber security since Brett Lavender isn't here. Uh, but this does uh, uh, point up uh, uh, an important uh, issue that we all need to be more aware of because computers are constantly being hacked, uh, information is being obtained illegally and improperly, and people need to be more aware of what they can do on their home computers, just like businesses need to be more aware. So let me read this proclamation. It reads as follows. Whereas Macon Bibb County recognizes that it has made uh, that it has a vital role in identifying, protecting its citizens uh, from and responding to cyber threats that may have significant impact to our individual and collective security and privacy. And whereas critical infrastructure sectors are increasingly reliant on information systems and technology to support financial services, energy, telecommunications, transportation, utilities, healthcare, and emergency response system, and whereas the Stop, Think, Connect campaign serves as the national cybersecurity public awareness campaign implemented through a coalition of private companies, nonprofit organizations, governments, and academic institutions working together to increase the understanding of cyber threats and empowering the American public to be safer and more secure online. And whereas the National Institute of Standards and Technology uh, Cybersecurity Framework has been developed as a free resource to help organizations improve their cybersecurity practices through a practical approach to addressing evolving threats and challenges, and whereas maintaining the security of cyberspace is a shared responsibility in which each of us has a critical role to play and awareness of computer security essentials uh, will improve the security of Macon Bibb County's information, infrastructure, and economy. Now, therefore, our Robert A. B. Rickett do hereby proclaim October 2018 as National Cyber Security Awareness Month in Macon Bibb County. And I encourage all citizens to join me in recognizing and bringing awareness throughout our community to cyber security and the need to be more careful when you are on your personal computer and online about what you click on and what you shouldn't click on. Uh, in witness whereof I have here unto uh, set my hand and caused the seal of the consolidated government to be a fixed first day of October. And uh, Chris, 
thank you for all that you do for us as far as putting out information in a safe and secure way. We appreciate it. Um, we also have another invited guest, uh, M Mindy Hart, uh, who wanted to take just a minute or two uh, and uh, inform us of some very Im important uh, developments. Mindy, thank you for being with us. And thank, and thank you for having me. It's hard to get all of y'all in at one time. I try to visit <laughs> y'all during the year in your individual capacities, but lately it's been difficult. So I figured that I would try to get y'all all at once and invite um, all of the commissioners and staff of the government um, on behalf of the board of Riverside Cemetery to the Reeds of America in December. Um, the Reeds of America event we have, it, uh, we'll be at Riverside Cemetery and we honor our veterans through the Lane of Remembrance. I didn't want to thank you. <laughs> uh, Reeds on the graves uh, of our country's fallen heroes and the act of saying the name of each and every uh, veteran aloud. So at 12 p.m., we'll have the Civil Air Patrol. They'll conduct a brief ceremony in front of the gatehouse, and they will honor all of armed services. And the ceremony is open to the public, but we would like to have some of Macon, Bibb County, there representing the city. And um, after the ceremony, you're welcome to stay and lay a wreath down for the veterans. And the wreaths across, just in case you're not familiar with it, the wreaths across America is a national program that encourages individuals, community groups, and families to sponsor wreaths for placement in the national cemeteries throughout the United States. The wreaths are placed on graves in designated areas and thousands of unvisited graves as well. Um, er every year, Riverside tries to have at least 500 to 800 wreaths donated and laid on that day. Um, some days it's been cold, some days it's been warm, so we're hoping for a good year this year. Um, and we would just like to invite all of the county commissioners and staff out that day to represent the county if they can make it. Mandy, thank you very thank much, you. and we appreciate it. Tell us the, the date that you're having December this. December 15th, it's a Saturday, and it starts at noon. Um, and it's just a very and quick where, ceremony. And where? It, it's right there in front of Riverside Cemetery at the gatehouse at the entrance. The gatehouse at Riverside Cemetery, December the 15th at noon. Yes, sir, and I'll leave something for Chris with that. That would be great. Okay. Mindy, thank you for thank being you with so us, much. and thank you for what you do in that regard. Next item on our agenda, uh, public comments on agenda items. This is when people have the opportunity to talk to us about uh, an item that's on the agenda for action tonight uh, before we vote on it. Judd, did we have anybody to sign up uh, for... Okay, so we, we have no, no, no public comments on agenda items, so we'll move straight into reports from uh, the, the standing committees. And the first is operations uh, and finance, and that uh, report will be given to us uh, by Chairman Watkins. Chairman Watkins? Sir, the Operations and Finance Committee met on October the 9th and took the following action. The committee approved a contract agreement with BSTP in the amount of $45,000 for office space occupied by the Georgia Cooperative Extension Services. The committee approved a lease agreement with the Coliseum Medical Center for a lease of 425 parking spaces located at the Macon Coliseum for 7,000, 7, excuse me, commas in the room, $79,050. An agreement with Commercial Controls Group for the installation of HVAC at the Family and Children's Services offices. The committee approved a con professional services contract with WMA Architects for renovations to Henderson Memorial Stadium in the amount of $184,000. The committee approved a appropriations of $150,000 from blight bonds to the Land Bank Authority to fulfill a three-year contract. The committee also approved adding a new chapter to the code of ordinance for short-term vacation rentals. The met again today and approved the following items. An agreement with Moose Coast Sports Lighting in the amount of $475,000 for lighting at South Macon Bibb Recreation Center. The, an agreement with Middle Georgia Outdoor Lighting to install sports lights at Macon Bibb County Recreation Center in the amount of $143,800. 
a contract with WLS Construction for West Macon ball fields to be paid from Blight Sploss funds in the amount of $527,170.60. A revision of Chapter 4 of the Code of Ordinances in regards to regulation of alcohol beverage was pulled from this agenda and an agreement with ANCO Consultant to serve as a defined contribution pension plan consultant in the amount of $25,000 was approved today. This concludes the report of operations and finance committee. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman Watkins. I understand there was no report from uh, economic and community development. I understand there's no report from public safety. Uh, so that takes us to facilities and engineering uh, committee and uh, that report will be given uh, to us by Vice Chairman uh, Allen. Vice Chairman Allen. Yes, sir. The engineering committee met on October the 9th, 2018. One of two. The committee approved the construction of a pasturian interchange. I can't even say that word. Pasturian. No. I'm caught up on a word. You believe that? Lane, I need to go back to school. <laughs> Connecting the west side of Spring Street Bridge to existing trail in Rose Hill Cemetery. The committee also approved the proposed fee schedule changes at Bowden Golf Course. This completes the report of facilities and engineering committee. Uh, uh, thank you, Vice Chairman Allen. Uh, uh, good report. Uh, next item on our agenda is a consent agenda. Uh, this is when we have alcohol beverage license request. Uh, we have two uh, tonight. Uh, both of them are accompanied by all of the necessary and prerequisite paperwork, uh, which consists of the the, the sheriff's uh, uh, successful uh, and approved background check uh, of the applicant, uh, the Macon Business Development Services uh, fee uh, to certify that the appropriate uh, uh, license fees have been paid, uh, the planning and zoning certificate of compliance, um, the measurement form uh, from the uh, county attorney's office to say that it complies uh, with the requisite uh, uh, measurement forms and the ad that ran in the telegraph. Um, the first uh, of these uh, is for um, AA Entertainment LLC uh, doing business as the Rodeo Bar and Grill at 4053 Pinona Avenue. Uh, it is for um, liquor, mixed drinks, beer, uh, and wine to be consumed on the premises uh, at that location. Uh, Mr. Yeah, let me I, get. I think there was an amendment filed. This is actually uh, an alcohol beverage license for Regina Smith. It was originally filed in AA Entertainment LLC, but they filed an amendment uh, for Regina Smith doing business as Rodeo Bar and Grill. And, and I do see a note to that effect uh, yeah. under here by, from the sheriff saying approved for Regina Smith but it's still the rodeo bar and grill, I suppose, at that location. Yes. All right, uh, good. The, the second application uh, is uh, for uh, J. Mataji uh, 0916 Incorporated doing business as the Quick Zip uh, number two. Uh, it is for beer and wine package sales to go uh, at 1800 uh, Pinona uh, Avenue. I understand uh, the commission, uh, excuse me, the committee of the whole uh, wishes to vote on these uh, separately. Uh, so I'll take the first one first, and that's AA Entertainment uh, LLC doing business as, uh, I'm sorry, it's Regina Smith <laughs> doing business as Rodeo Bar and Grill. Um, the Committee of the Whole uh, recommends approval. Uh, there being no further discussion, uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and that license uh, is uh, issued as requested. Uh, the second uh, item about uh, J. Mataji 0916 Incorporated, there was some conversation about the distance requirements uh, and uh, there was a, a certification that while it fails to meet current distance requirement separation, that it was grandfathered in uh, because of the previous uh, license issuance uh, for the same alcohol package sales to go at that location and the certification of the uh, county attorney's office that after review it meets the requirements of the state and local uh, grandfather clause and is grandfathered so the, it does meet the, the distance requirement. The committee of the whole recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of issuing that license signify. Uh, Commissioner Wynn, I got your light on. Did you want to speak to this? Yes, for this. 
thank you very much. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, so, uh, all, uh, committee, committee of the Whole recommends approval. Uh, all in favor, uh, signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. Let me see the hands of the no's, please. One, two, three, four. One, two. Uh oh. <laughs> Four to four? Well, uh, a tie, uh, I, get, I get to vote. I vote yes, uh, so the license is approved as requested. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you got, got all that? All right, good. Uh, moving on to things not quite as controversial, uh, we'll move on to old business. Uh, and the first item uh, of old business is uh, the lease of space um, at uh, uh, First Street uh, for the Georgia Cooperative Extension Service, and I'll uh, ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission authorizing the mayor to execute a commercial lease contract with BSTP LLC in the amount of $45,000 for office space located at 127, 129, and 145 First Street to be occupied by Georgia Cooperative Extension Services from October the 1st, 2018 until September the 30th, 2019, in substantially the same form as attached here too as Exhibit A and for other purposes. Uh, the Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. Uh, next uh, is a, um, a resolution uh, to sign an agreement uh, for repairs to the HVAC system at the Department of Family and Children's Services, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission to authorize the mayor to execute an agreement with Commercial Controls Group, Inc. for the installation of HVAC control system upgrades to the Division of Family and Children's Services Office, located at 456 Oglethorpe Street, in the amount of $144,300, payable from the DFACS maintenance in lieu of rent fund and for other lawful purposes. Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the resolution is adopted. Uh, next uh, uh, is an ordinance uh, uh, to appropriate uh, a payment uh, for the Land Bank Authority, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. An ordinance of the Macon Bibb County Commission to appropriate 150000 of FY 2018 Blight Bond Funds for the funding of the Macon Bibb County Land Bank Authority contractual obligation of an outstanding balance of 150000 and for other purposes. The Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the ordinance signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the ordinance is adopted. Uh, next uh, is a, a resolution to approve a lease agreement uh, for parking spaces in the Coliseum parking lot for the Coliseum Medical Center, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission to authorize the mayor to enter into a lease agreement with Coliseum Medical Center, LLC, for the lease of 425 parking spaces located at the Macon Coliseum at $15.50 per space per month for a term of one year for a total annual lease payment of $79,050 with nine annual renewals to include 3% increase each year in rental rate, subject to 60 days notice by either party for non-renewal and for other purposes. The Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. Uh, next uh, is a resolution uh, to provide uh, health insurance coverage um, on the new uh, scale uh, at 25% of the cost to the employee and the 75 percent of the cost of the county and i'll ask the clerk to read that by caption a resolution of the macon bibb county commission to provide health insurance coverage to macon bibb county employees with the employees paying approximately 25 percent of the cost of coverage and the county paying approximately 75 percent of the cost of coverage and for other lawful purposes operations and finance committee recommends approval is there further discussion 
Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. Uh, n next is uh, item F, uh, which is an ordinance uh, to add a, a new uh, division to the inaugural code of ordinances regarding short-term vacation rentals. And I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. An ordinance of the Macon Duke County Commission to add a new division to the inaugural code of ordinances for Macon Biff County being Division 14.5 of Article 2 of Chapter 7 relating to regulation of short-term vacation rentals by implementing procedures for the registration and licensing of STVRS and to provide for other lawful purposes. Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the committee amendment uh, to the ordinance signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the ordinance as amended by the committee amendment is adopted. Uh, next uh, is an ordinance uh, to repeal and replace Chapter 4 of the inaugural code of ordinances for Macon Bibb County relating to the regulation of alcoholic beverages. Had another good discussion on that, had another good discussion on that uh, today, but understand uh, that the author wants to hold it one more time for additional comment and question. Is that correct? Yes. Is the objection to to holding that uh, and bringing it back up at committee meeting and then at our next meeting. Hearing no objection, we'll hold that one uh, and, and proceed to item H, uh, which is a uh, resolution to approve a, a professional services contract for architectural fees at uh, Henderson Memorial Stadium. I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission to approve a professional services contract with WMA Architects Planners, Inc., doing business as WM2A Architects for the renovation of Henderson Memorial Stadium in the amount of $184,000 to be paid from the Capital Improvement Fund and for other lawful purposes. Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Commissioner Watkins, got your light on, sir. That was for the previous item. Okay. Uh, uh, is there further discussion uh, on this item about hiring WM2A architects? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. Next is item I, uh, uh, which is a resolution uh, to uh, buy some uh, lights uh, to, for South uh, Macon Bill Recreation Center. And I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon Bill County Commission authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement with Musco Sports Lighting LLC in the amount of $475,000 for lighting to be installed at the South Macon Bibb Recreation Center to be paid by 2017 SPLOS bond proceeds and or 2018 SPLOS revenues and for other lawful purposes. Uh, the Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. Uh, next is item J, uh, which is a resolution to install the lights that we just bought. And I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement with Middle Georgia Outdoor Lighting Inc. in the amount of $143,800 for services related to the installation of the Musco lighting equipment at the South Macon Bibb Recreation Center to be paid by 2017 SPLOS bond proceeds and or 2018 SPLOS revenues and for other lawful purposes. Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. Uh, next is uh, item K, uh, which is to appropriate money for the Tucker uh, Road Bridge uh, over, um, um, no, no, it's not certain, it's, it's over the, the uh, Rocky Creek. It's over Rocky Creek, the bridge <laughs> over Rocky Creek. And I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. An ordinance of the Macon Bibb County Commission approving and authorizing the appropriation of up to $300,000 from the 2017 SPLOS bond proceeds and or 2018 SPLOS revenues from 2018 road and bridges 
Tucker Road Bridge line item as shown on the 2018 SPLOS project timeline and budget and for other lawful purposes. Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Mayor Pro Tem Tim. Uh, just for clarification, I know it's the Rocky Creek Bridge, but what area is that? That's not the one on 475? No, it's, it's within uh, 150 yards of the bridge over 475. So if you come uh, on Tucker Road over the bridge that they're fixing to, to re replace and come down the hill, the little small narrow bridge over Rocky Creek is right there before you get to the traffic light. <laughs> Huh? No, no, it wouldn't be Peak Road. But but yeah, it, it, it's it's within 150 yards of I-475, and and this will this will keep them right keep them from having to close Tucker Road twice. For, is there further discussion? Uh, hearing hearing none. All in favor of the ordinance uh, signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the ordinance uh, is adopted. Uh, next is item L, which is a resolution <clears throat> to authorize uh, a contract between Macon Bibb and WLS Construction in the, uh, for West Macon baseball field improvements. Uh, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission to authorize the mayor to execute a contract between Macon Bibb County and WLS Construction, Inc. in an amount not to exceed $527,170.60 for fencing and improvements to the West Macon baseball field to be paid by 2017 Blight Bond Funds, 2017 SPLOS Bond Proceeds, and our 2018 SPLOS Revenues and Operate. for other <coughs> purposes. <laughs> the Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the resolution is adopted. Uh, uh, next uh, is, is a, uh, a resolution uh, to authorize the construction of a pedestrian interchange connecting Spring Street uh, with the existing uh, trail in Rose Hill Cemetery, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A, res <coughs> excuse me. a resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission to authorize the Parks and Beautification Department Engineering Department, Historic Macon Foundation, and Newtown Macon to construct pedestrian interchanges connecting the west side of the Spring Street Bridge to existing trail in Rose Hill Cemetery and for other purposes. Facilities and Engineering Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. Uh, next is a resolution to approve a new uh, fee schedule at Bowden Golf Course, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission to approve the proposed fee schedule changes at Bowden Golf Course as a tax year two as Exhibit A and for other purposes. Facilities and Engineering Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the resolution is adopted. Uh, item O uh, is a resolution uh, to authorize the uh, execution of an agreement with Chris R. Sheridan's construction manager at risk uh, for the extension of the vision block. And I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission to authorize the mayor to execute an agreement with Chris R. Sheridan and Company for construction manager at risk services for the construction of road and streetscape improvements on 2nd Street from Plum Street Lane to Poplar Street and an amount not to exceed $1,500,000 payable from a grant from the State Road and Tollway Authority, Georgia Transportation Infrastructure Bank, and for other lawful purposes. The Committee of the Whole recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. One no, Commissioner Lucas, uh, uh, the, but the ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. Uh, next uh, is uh, item P, uh, to uh, hire a consultant uh, for our defined contribution pension plan, and I'll ask the clerk to read that by caption. A resolution of the Macon Bibb County Commission to authorize and approve the selection of and entering into 
an agreement with ANCO Consulting to serve as the defined contribution pension plan consultant in the amount of 25000 per year for years one through three and for other lawful purposes. Operations and Finance Committee recommends approval. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the resolution is adopted. Uh, next is new business, and there are only two items of new business that have been prepared by legal and sent down thus far. Uh, they are, uh, um, the first, uh, a resolution authorizing the acceptance of a grant from the Office of Justice Programs, uh, fiscal year 18, Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant Program in the amount of $65,351 to be used by the Bibb County Sheriff's Office and the Bibb County Drug Court with no local match. I'm going to refer that to uh, op Operations and Finance uh, Committee uh, rather than Public Safety because even though it's uh, no local match, I think I'll run it through Operations and Finance just so we're good on that. O operations and Finance will have that one. Uh, next is an ordinance uh, approving and authorizing the appropriation of $40,710 from the 2017 SPLOS bond proceeds and or 2018 SPLOS revenues from 2023 Parks and Recreation Bowden Line item uh, to 2018 Parks and Recreation Bowden Line item. This is moving that money ahead. I'm gonna refer that to the Operations and Finance Committee as well. That's all of the new business that has been, Commissioner Watkins, I'm sorry. Did I yeah, something? so I know the, the new business was a little light today, and I just wanted to say I'm open to suspending the rules. Uh, we had a storm last week that threw y'all off by a couple of days, so if you got anything else that you're needing to put on the operations and the finance, I'm completely open and understanding. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate that because we, we, we did miss a day last week, and, and, that, and that would help us. Uh, so there may be some additional items to come down. Be sure and check your agenda, which is published on Friday afternoon. And that'll show all of the new business to be considered by uh, the committees um, at their meeting next Tuesday, which I believe will be the 23rd, uh, beginning at 9 o'clock uh, a.m. in the large conference room uh, for consideration of those, those items of new business and others that'll come down and be on the agenda published Friday afternoon. That brings us down to public uh, comments on non-agenda items. And we have uh, a couple of people that signed up. Uh, first is Jake Farrow. That, that wants to talk to us about action for fiscal health. Thank you very much for being here and for your patience. Thank It'll you very much, Mr. Mayor and up, County Commissioners. Up appreciate five it. Five minutes. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> action plans, there are 12 key points on my plan, and I'm sure there are more action items as well. Um, number one is to reduce all manager salaries by 10%, including the mayor's office as well. Number two is cancel all consultant contracts including the financial consultant who asked for f five millage rate increase and then will work on the budget, quote unquote. And the third one I had was already addressed just about five minutes ago. You signed up a consultant to handle the defined benefit plan. I applaud you for that. I think that's fantastic. And the third item on the list is implement a plan to shut down the current defined benefit plan and B to implement a 457B or something similar and uh, for the current employees. And then third would be to implement an annuity program for the uh, current retirees. But I applaud you for hiring the consultant for I guess a maximum of three years. Don't cancel that one. That's a very important one. Uh, number four, form public-private partnerships for operating and maintaining the following entities. The Grand Opera House already has one with the Mercer University, but there's a Douglas Theater, the Bowden Golf Course, South Macon Re Recreation Center, John Drew slash there in Usry Park, Herbert Smart Airport, and there are others as well. Uh, it's been done all over the country and I think it's very important that we address that. We have built entities that now require operating and maintain, maintaining dollar, maintenance dollars that we don't have. Number five, to conduct a thorough in-depth evaluation of the current list of the uh, recipients of the hotel motel tax. There's approximately $4 million a year that is uh, received from hotel motel taxes. The current list is outdated and antiquated. Several organizations should 
be on the list and are not, and others that are on the list should be reevaluated for the percentage that they receive. I think it's very important. When the 40% uh, allocated for the CVB was developed, it was years ago. Uh, now technology uh, uh, is unbelievable and we can do a whole lot more with fewer people. And there are so many entities in town that draw uh, visitors. The Peniman, Richard, Little Richard House now is included. You got the Almond Brothers House, you've got several. That should be done. Um, all nonprofits, including 501c3s, to be, this is number six, to be self sufficient by July 1 of 2019. I've researched this and all over the country, and I, in fact, I had a conversation yesterday with a man that his family goes back to the 1800s, um, an African American man. Um, they formed a uh, 501c3 to operate a house that recognizes African American heritage, and it's all funded by fundraisers not one dime from the uh, government. Evaluate the possibility of combining, I mentioned this one several times before, the Economic Opportunity Council, Planning and Zoning, Urban Development Authority, Industrial Authority, Industrial Authority, Economic Development, Land Bank Authority, uh, Community <laughs> Enhancement Authority, into fewer groups, and also if, if the Chamber of Commerce moves into a new building on Poplar Street, and house everyone in that same building for better communications and um, reduction of redundancies. Um, and also the group should have yearly or every six month make good studies presented to the city commissioners. Number nine, keep making bib, reassign it back rather, back to the Cherry Blossom headquarters. For 30 plus years, keep making bib beautiful was operated along with the Cherry Blossom Festival with one person in charge. In 2012, for some reason, it was split. It should be pulled back together for a savings of 100,000 a year. Number 10, implement a project whereby naming rights for key entities like Central City Park, the Auditorium, South Macon Recreation Center, Coliseum, Centriplex can be um, marketed and sold, and it could be something like the Geico Auditorium, uh, the, the Marriott, Health Center, the Marriott uh, Nevison Health CCP. Number 11, establish an oversight committee. I know there's a committee now that is in charge of the SPLOS funds, but we cannot afford to keep building new entities, not so much redoing the old entities, but brand new entities like the South Macon Recreation Center, and then expect to operate them with money that we don't have. Upgrading infrastructure is, is okay, but adding brand new facilities without the means to operate and manage them uh, successfully. Um, that's very, very important. Uh, last but not least, and there are many others, I'm sure that you all have some, is the commissioners and the mayor and the county manager must demonstrate togetherness and teamwork to the public as we take on the major challenge of restoring the city to financial stability. Must act as one, no more throwing people under the bus, together or nothing. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Michelle and I love the city, we love the county, and we will do whatever we can to help make it better every year. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Farrow. We, we appreciate you being here, appreciate your patience. Finally, Mr. Donald Richardson has uh, some additional grassroots uh, reflections that he wants to share uh, with us. Glad to see you up and about, Mr. Richardson, and, and we appreciate your patience. And you're recognized for up to five minutes, sir. <coughs> Book of Daniel, chapter 12, tra chapter 10. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Bel to Shassar. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. And he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, and neither did I anoint myself at all, all th till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great ri river, which is Hidiko, then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. His body 
also was like the girl, and his face has the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. Yet heard I the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. And behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright unto thee, am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand, to chasten thyself before thy God. Thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one in twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. And when he had spoken such words to me, I set my face toward the ground, and I became dumb. And behold, one like the similar to the sons of men touched my lips, and then I opened my mouth and spake and said unto him, That stupid for me, O my Lord, by the vision, my sorrows are turned upon me, and I have retained no strength. For how can the servant of this my Lord talk with this my Lord? For as for me straightway, there remained no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. Then there, there, then there came again and touched me, one like the appearance of a man, and, and he strengthened me. And he said, O man, greatly beloved, fear not, peace be unto thee, be strong, yea, be strong. And when he had spoken to me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Then say he, Knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee, and now will I return to flight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grecia which shall come. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scriptures of truth, and there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael, your prince. This is, I'm sharing this from my Book of Common Prayer. I have morning and evening prayers, so I'm always keeping you in my prayers. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Mr. Richard. We, we appreciate you sharing that uh, uh, with us. I have one uh, point of personal privilege, uh, Commissioner Lucas. Um, thank you very much. Um, I wanted to mention two things. First of all, um, I think we need to really applaud the uh, Health Benefits Committee and all the work that they have done and thank uh, Commissioner Allen for putting it into legislation. It was very successful and the work continues. And so at some future meeting, I'd like to have the members of that committee to be here and we express our appreciation to them. It was a tre tremendous amount of work. The other thing that I wanted to do was to express appreciation to uh, the mayor and my uh, colleagues here on the commission as well as all others who have called or uh, come by to visit with your senator. He um, underwent successful uh, bypass surgery a uh, week and a half ago. He is recovering. He is at home doing very well, but he really does enjoy the phone calls and, you know, talking a little politics, just a little bit. So we, he wanted me to say that to all of you to thank you very, very much. And he will be uh, uh, up and ready to go back and represent you again in Atlanta in, in January. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for that report. No other points of personal privilege. Uh, we've reached the end of our agenda, so can I get a motion to adjourn? Uh, so moved. Wait a minute. What? Uh, without objection? Y yes, from Mr. Odom. You. Commissioner, Commissioner Lucas, speaking about her husband, I don't think we should forget about Commissioner uh, Jones, who's having some health issues. 
Uh, he's not here tonight. Uh, you know, he's had some health issues he's been dealing with. We need to remember him. Uh, secondly, um, just it's more of a semantics in the health insurance cost sharing, uh, 25, 75. It's used the word approximately. Uh, you know, why can't it be 25, 75? Uh, and then thirdly, paying $25,000 for a consultant for a defined contribution plan, you've had several very competent uh, benefits insurance CPAs volunteer their time to do that. Why would we pay $25,000 when we've got competent people here in the county who volunteered uh, to do this? Uh, is there some connection that we're trying to keep somebody, you know, knowing all the business? I mean, maybe there's a good reason for it, but you know, we've had a couple of people who have volunteered, and there's a lot of competent people who could help you without spending twenty-five dollars, twenty-five thousand. That's my comments. Thank you very much, Thank sir. Uh, we've reached the end of our agenda. We've got a motion to adjourn without objection. Uh oh. Will you wait? You, is that a sign? Since we're thanking another a lot, point, another point of personal yeah, privilege, yes, please, uh, sir. Commissioner Wynn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I wanted to say thank you to our EMA people and all the, the work that they did last week when our storm was coming in. Since we're recognizing a lot of folks, they need to have a little round of applause for the good work and the preparation they had right. for, for that. You right. know, <laughs> luckily we dodged a bullet, but right. we had we were right. prepared for and, it. I and think. we are planning to to invite them all uh, at to our next meeting. So we'll try to get that done and, and tell them all thank you. But that's that's point well made. Any other points of personal privilege? If not, without objection, we are adjourned. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.